Hope everyone happy record store day or happy day after record store day. Um, this video is probably going to come out the day after record store day because I have a pretty long couple of days of trying to figure out what I'm going to do in terms of either uh, camping out at a record store or trying to get up early. So I guess I'll kind of talk through the, my record door, record store day experience and all the pageantry that happened uh, over this uh, over a record store day. So a lot of Beatles and solo Beatles, as you know, um, I'm currently at my grandparents' house. So I got the uh, the 1948 uh, Rockola jukebox in the background here uh, to kind of give a little bit of a different background to show some uh, other record store day stuff. So I got the Beatles record player. Got a couple of George Harrison picture discs, uh, John Lennon EP, two versions of that, and the new Ringo Starr EP as well. So I want to show you what I picked up, and then I also picked up a couple um, used uh, records as well from uh, one of the record stores that I went to. But um, I went to two record stores this uh, record store day, and big shout out to them. They ran everything pretty well. Um, I went to uh, two record stores in Birmingham, one's called Seasick, and that was kind of like the big record store that would probably have the best opportunity to have the Beatles record player and pretty much have everything. Um, probably in the state of Alabama, that was probably the best one to go to for that. And then I went to Renaissance Records, a little bit of a smaller store, um, also in Birmingham. I went there uh, around 9.30 after uh, the first record store. So. I, I follow them on Instagram, and they posted that the first person lined up, I don't know, like midday Friday. So I obviously wasn't there. Um, I was coming back down from school, and um, I had to do some other things before. Kind of had to figure out what to do for Record Store Day. And then I did some other stuff, kind of settled in at, at my grandparents' house. And then I decided to set out a chair in line around 8 o'clock. Friday night, and then it started just like downpour, thunderstorming, and raining. So I kind of waited that out for about an hour and a half or so. Then I just kind of hung out <laughs> in my car for about another 30 minutes or so. And then there was about, I was probably about 40, 45th in line, roughly. And um, yeah, so I decided to go back here and sleep and just hope no one either took my chair or stole my spot. Um, we waited to some, uh, I also went with my, uh, with my mom. So she was kind of helping me out uh, with everything. And uh, so we kind of waited to um, see if any people kind of stand behind us just to kind of get in the middle of, uh, of some people kind of make it. So we left a, we left a towel there, we left a little, a little cup of water and a couple snacks and a little uh, arm, uh, arm rest holders just to kind of make it look like we were uh, at least actively using it. But uh, we went back home, we slept, and we got back to the record store around 6.15, 6.30 or so, and the line was pretty large by then, so it felt kind of weird just kind of walking up to my chair. And um, they actually, the line actually moved up about 20 people, so we kind of lost 20 spots. So I ended up being 66 in line, but it's better than staying out all night being 40 first in line so um a couple people that were sitting behind our chair kind of looked at us a little bit weird and uh but there, there was no rule of leaving a chair there but uh, it worked out okay so anyway um 66 in line once the doors opened at eight um it was probably i probably got in the store around 8 45 or so so let's see what I got here. So, ended up picking up Ringo Starr's EP here. There's the back. And um, I really enjoyed the uh, the single off this album, February Sky. I've been listening to that um, once it was released. And uh, I really enjoyed that song, so I'm excited to play the rest of the EP. But it comes with a uh, inner sleeve with all the lyrics and it's supposed to be on black and white uh, marble vinyl uh, I got a little bit more on the less white splatter 
a version of that. So there's some white specks on there, but not too much of it. So it's more just a uh, black colored vinyl with some and with some white specks throughout. But that's okay. And I also checked to see if this was numbered in any way, just to see if I can find the lowest number. But it was not uh, specifically numbered like the George Harrison picture discs were. So going down the line, I found the John Lennon Mind Games EP, and I ended up picking up the Glow in a Dark version for this one. And that's all I, I didn't get the other variation because I guess it's not technically one, it's a different pressing and copy, but they did limit you to one copy per customer. So here's a glow and dark vinyl. Looks kind of just white right now, but it, it glows up pretty, pretty nice, a nice green when you just leave it out in the light uh, for a little bit. And then you just uh, put it in a dark room, it glows pretty nice. So I know I was going to, going to the other record store afterwards, so I picked up the, the black vinyl edition from the other record store. And I'm just going to keep that one sealed for now. And let's see. And then the last two, I was kind of debating whether or not to buy right away or to kind of wait to see if the prices went down. But... Um, today's you know supporting local record stores and stuff so i ended up getting the uh, the george harrison picture discs as well um for right now i'm going to keep them sealed just because i mean i don't really play these albums anyway um it would be nice if they added some of the bonus songs on this um on the wonderwall music like the um one of them came out on a cd bonus track i know the uh, the song uh, escaping my mind, but George actually, there's like actually singing into it. I, I I'll remember the song here in a little bit. Yeah, so I remember the uh, the song right after the video was over, of course. But yeah, the song was called "In the First Place." Has some singing. I think there was a bonus track on a CD that was released uh, sometimes in the '90s. But if they just kind of added something like that to a record store day release, I think it would have been uh, pretty good. Other than just a regular picture disc. All right, bye. In a little bit. So when I was going through the store at first, I didn't see any like um, any places to where to see like if they had the record player there or not at the first record store I went to. So I was kind of like, I wasn't really expecting to see it, but as I was going down the line with all the record store day release, I kind of saw at the cash register spot, they had one displayed right by the cash register spot. So I kind of asked one of some of the uh, co-workers or the workers there at the record store um, if that is still for sale and they said yes. So I went down the line, picked up all the other records and luckily no one bought it. They only had two record players. So, and I ended up getting the last one, the second one. So there's the front. There is the sides over here, and you kind of just slip the sticker here to open up the box. And the corner has a little bit of a damage on the box, but I can't be too picky when there's only one there. So I'm just going to show the uh, the three inch record player and all the little three inch records that come with it. Uh, this kind of comes with some instructions, and it also comes with a record carrying case which was also kind of fun so there you go it's got the some tour dates on the side there and you just like a normal record case lift open the latch i'll set that down right there and they, they had some uh some extra three inch uh, records from previous record store days so they gave me some some disney movie three inch records for for free because I guess they had a lot of them. So the Little Mermaid one, um, I, I opened up because I was curious and uh, it's on like a green vinyl <laughs> three inch record. So there you go. <laughs> so.
So that was interesting. Just adding to my three inch record collection, of course. But uh, yeah, we're here to see the Beatles here. So here is She Loves You. And the barcode is like kind of stickered across the flap where you open it. So I just use an X Acto knife just to kind of slit it open, just so it's kind of like a nice clean cut. And every package comes with a paper picture sleeve. So there's the front and there is the back, the Ed Sullivan Show. And each record label is on a kind of a pseudo capital swirl label. And it also matches the color of the cover. So this is more of a red. I know the lighting isn't great in here. So it's yellow and kind of a red swirl. And then the other ones you'll see um, kind of some slight variations of the capital swirl here. And like I said, each one comes with a poster, a different poster as well. So there's the Beatles in front of the American flag. And let's go to, I saw her standing there. And this one's just kind of on the classic yellow and orange swirl there. And each one of these does have its own uh, unique matrix number. So I thought that was kind of uh, fun to go uh, to go through. And here is the poster. I believe it's just them in front of the White House, if I remember, or the Capitol building. There you have it. Next up, we got Till There Was You, kind of a unique picture sleeve from that kind of same photo shoot. So I kind of like to use the different picture for that. There's the back. And of course, the covers are uh, match the front of the kind of outer casing, but the back is the same uh, picture for all of them. As you can see, this one's kind of more on the yellow ish. Um, side of the capital label and let's see what is the poster for this one I believe it's just them at the Ed Sullivan show and the last and final uh, fourth one is I want to hold your hand on kind of this green cover and this one is my favorite label because it kind of reminds me of the the Starline label from the 60s because it's on the uh, the green capital label so i think that's pretty neat i uh, guess one thing to maybe worry about these picture sleeves is that they're really thin paper and i guess with the records in there i guess it could cause some seam splits i guess so i'm trying to think of the best way to store these uh if anyone has any suggestions or i shouldn't even really be worrying about it i'm not going to really play these too much i'll definitely want to play them a couple times and test out the record player but um if anyone has any suggestions please let me know how to store them without all the seam splits potential and then came with some cords uh, usb cords and then here is the, the dust cover for the record player there's a up close shot there has some beetle tickets uh imprinted on there Set that down real quick. Okay. There we go. And of course, here is the three inch record player. Uh, still kind of tied down. Haven't really messed with it yet. Um, just playing on the backside. You got an earphone or headphone jacket there and the USB and playing on that side. So this is kind of the on button and the volume knob and i think this is just pitch control over here um i guess whether or not how fast or slow this record player goes to the other to the when it's actually playing the records so pops on like so and there you have it the beatles three inch turntable so really excited to find that i was pretty much saying to myself if i don't 
find this for retail. Uh, I've been seeing them going for hundreds of dollars on eBay. I was like, I might as well just buy an actual turntable instead of a, a three inch kind of more novelty thing. So I'm happy I got it for retail. Found everything I wanted for record store day. And then I also found a couple uh, used records from the second record store I went to. And we're going to start off with Beatles Sticks. And this is a 1968 pressing. It uh, also has the correct track listing on the back. And I know it might be kind of tough to see with the lighting here, but um, it has the uh, capital subsidiary uh, rim text making a 1968 pressing. And it's also from Jacksonville. And then I thought this one was just a uh, kind of a fun record to get, but this is a kind of an unofficial release from Italy from 1973, and it's the uh, the Beatles uh, verse or in the Rolling Stones, and um, they just have some early songs from the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Beatles on one side, Rolling Stones on the other. So there's the back. So the Beatles size has "Boys, Do You Want to Know Secret," "All My Loving," "Please Please Me," "Misery," "Twist and Shout," and "You Can't Do That." And the Rolling Stones side has Carol, I Just Want to Make Love to You, Cry to Me, Walk the Dog, You Can Make It If You Try, and then Route 66. And the, it's on the Joker label. Apparently these, I saw one of the comments on Discogs, the, they don't sound the best, but I thought it was just a fun, and I like the cover, uh, kind of artwork on it. There's another... A release of this album which is kind of like a plain white background and just says the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. This one has at least a little bit more interest to it. And then the final record I got is a John Lennon interview 45 and it's uh, on the What's It All About uh, label from 1981. Just um, I believe kind of one of his last interviews before his death, and the host is, uh, I guess I, I won't even try to say his name there, but um, yeah, there you go. So I got some nice fun surprises along with Record Store Day this year, and it was a very successful, very long day. Um, I know it's a little bit longer video, but I got a lot of good stuff and I wanted to show you, and um, also... For the Ringo, something Ringo related that came up a few days ago, is that they had a listening party at Amoeba in Los Angeles, and they pressed 500 um, copies of like a seven-inch uh, 45 of February Sky, and I forget the other song. Um, I believe the other song was "Gonna Need Someone," I believe, and they pressed it on red vinyl, and there was about 500 copies made. Um, luckily I found, I pretty much, I found one on eBay and that's how I found out about the listening party. And, um, so I checked Discogs to see if they had any cheaper copies and there was one for sale for like, you know, a third or fourth of the price that they're going for right now. So I luckily snatched that one up and I'll be kind of excited to go through that one and show that one to you guys once I receive it in the mail. So. That was kind of some pre-record store day uh, surprise. So hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys had a successful and fun record store day as well. And look out for more videos in the future. Thanks.